Hey everybody, welcome back to Band House Recordings. I'm out here today on Pastori Point on the Kingdom Trails. That's up in northeastern Vermont where I work and live. And uh, today I just want to talk to you about something I was thinking about when I was coming down the hill to get to this sweet break spot. And that's putting effects on bass guitar. What? You're not supposed to do that. Oh, you're not supposed to make bass guitar stereo. While that's true, it does make things more complicated. Don't be afraid to experiment with making your bass sound a little bit unique. I mean, what if you have one of those pop guitar parts or not guitar parts, one of those pop parts without guitar, where it's just bass and keyboards. Maybe you want to spice the bass up a little bit. A really classic thing, maybe overused, I don't think so, I personally love it, was in the 80s, people put a lot of chorus on their bass, and you know what? It's okay to make that stereo. Now, the one thing you want to be careful of, of course, is making the low end portion. That would probably be, you know, below, I don't know, below 200 hertz and down, maybe even a little bit higher, maybe below 300 and down, although you're probably cutting a lot of 300 out of your bass guitar already. The reason for doing that is stereo bass is really hard to mix. You know, it just, it covers things up, makes it cloudy. Typically in most productions, you want to keep your bass, the low end part in mono. So what you could do is you can molt or, you know, make a duplicate track of your bass guitar, high pass that way up and then throw a chorus on there or throw a flanger on or, Stereo delay, I mean Juan, Aldera Juan Alduarte sorry, from the, uh, from the Mars Volta and he plays with a bunch of other awesome bands. He's like all about effects on his guitar. He uses a lot of delay from the, uh, the Boss DL3 I think was the one he originally used. He uses the DL4. Check out his channel, man. Uh, I think it's called guitarsandeffects.com. That guy, like, his, he's on a whole nother level with bass effects. You know, I'm kind of just barely scratching the surface, but you know, I just wanted to bring that up. You know, go ahead, be creative. If you have a day where you're clearing your brain, getting outside, you know, getting some exercise or playing video games or, you know, reading a book and all of a sudden a creative idea pops in your head, don't be afraid to try it. My tip for today is on bass. Uh, Cause I tend to really, I'm not a, really a great bass player, but I tend to, so I, I really hyper zoom in and focus in on it. And I like to put effects on my bass guitar. There's a lot of songs. I have just a little bit of something. And what it does is it almost like, you don't even almost notice it if you mix it way down. It's kind of more, it's just a little bit more bite and grippiness almost, if that's a thing, to the bass guitar. So you can kind of hear the texture of the bass a little bit better in your ears rather than just a super consistent low end with no note. You know, that's the same reason for putting overdrive on a bass. It brings out those higher harmonics so you can actually hear more of the note that's being played. But I would definitely encourage you, check out some modulation effects, check out some delay, you know, just keep an eye on the stereo spectrum, you know, like you probably don't want a whole lot of low end way out there. Keep the low end mono and the high end stereo. All right, thanks so much guys. We'll catch you all there. Don't forget to like and subscribe below and uh, we'll see you on Friday with Tyler. Adios.